So welcome, good morning to episode 13 of our 20 for 2020 webinar series. Today's topic is going to be on NFPA 1851, standard on selection, care, and maintenance of protective ensembles for structural firefighting and proximity firefighting. So we're gonna be talking today about um, our gear, not disposable PPE that's in the news right now, but um, I will have a little bit of a discussion on that near the end today um, and show you what emergency reporting is doing to support that endeavor. Okay, again, welcome. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, our introduction, of course, the objective, and as those of you that have joined me in the past, know I like to keep that objective highly focused on the topic at hand uh, pertaining to uh, standard in this case today. Uh, and then I've got a couple poll questions I'm gonna launch here in just a few seconds that um, I always like to get some feedback from all of you and see who's participating in these webinars. Um, and if we have any people new to the emergency reporting family or are seeking a new solution for their, their agency, I'll give a quick rundown of emergency reporting, the system features, and then we're gonna get into PPE management in depth. So first off, let's talk about some polls. Oh, go to me, and you're giving me fits this morning. Hang on one second, everybody. Okay, okay, first poll question. Thank you for your patience. First poll question, are you interested in joining the ER family or a current ER customer? Okay, everybody's voted. Closing it on three, two, one. It looks like we've got all customers today. So what that means is I'm just gonna hit those couple slides very quickly since you already know pretty much about emergency reporting. So outstanding. Okay, a couple more coming up here. Who do we have with us today? What kind of agency do you work for? Career, volunteer, combo, or federal DOD? Yeah, you guys are quick today, fantastic. Okay, closing the poll on three, two, one. Good mix today. Mostly career, but we got volunteer and combo also. Outstanding. This one, do you follow NFPA 1851 to manage your PPE? And this is non-disposable PPE. We're talking our fire gear. So. A yes, no, sort of, or what the heck's NFPA 15, 1851? All right, this is this is promising. All right, closing it on three, two, one. This is great. So we have half yes and half sort of, and that's I'm glad to see that there's no no's and everybody knows what NFPA 1851 is. So we'll go into into that a little bit more today. So excellent news. Last one. How would you rate? your overall PPE management. One, terrible, barely any documentation at all. Poor some, but inconsistent. Fair, plenty of documentation, but disorganized. Good, quality documentation, well-organized, excellent, doing it electronically, and we, we feel like we have awesome tracking. You guys are great, all right. Closing it, three, two, one. Okay, so after today, the ones and twos, because you are all ER customers, you will no longer be ones and twos. You will start taking your department easily into the fours and fives. In the threes, you're probably doing a little bit, but you feel a little disorganized. I'm gonna help you with that today. Um, again, adhering to that standard, but taking it to the next level. I truly believe, and again, we're work, all of you are customers. So you're using the system, you have the tools at your disposal. So like an SCBA, like your set of extrication equipment. I always like to use that example because that was kind of my passion in the fire service. You have the you have the tools, now you just need the skills and knowledge to take it to the next level to become proficient. You know, you didn't learn how to don that SCBA in less than 30 seconds right in the academy. So I believe that with a little effort on your part, you will be at fours and fives easily within, and you could do this easily within a month or two. Um, and getting everything organized because there's a lot of labor on the front end and getting it going. But then once you have your system going, and hopefully those of you that are fours or fives um, can share some comments as we go through this and maybe some tips on how you've um, become a four or five in the management of your PPE with the other people uh, joining us today. So, all right, guys, thanks so much for um, participating. That's really uh, insightful. Let's get back to the presentation. <clears throat> go back, that's me, um, 22 years in the fire service, and I've been with emergency reporting since 2011, been using the system since 2004, and my current position is a business development analyst where I am a subject matter expert for our sales team, and I also work with key accounts uh, with, uh, within the uh, emergency reporting family. So a little bit about my background, and here's our objective today. How can I improve my agency's critical response 
of PPE management that truly adheres to NFPA 1851. And we'll go a little bit into NFPA 1851 as well. And uh, again, I would add to this, we wanna be a four or five on that scale we talked about earlier. A little bit about emergency reporting. Really, you guys are cust already customers. So again, just a reassurance that you're using a fantastic system. That's really what it comes down to here. A trustworthy system, uh, one that supports a lot of NFPA uh, standards. And then again, we're super proud to be able to serve the United States Marine Corps and the United States Army. So essentially, um, their entire fire and emergency services worldwide use emergency reporting. So it's pretty exciting. And I've been blessed to be able to go travel and teach when I was a trainer, um, our, our DOD trainer, uh, to those bases around the world and just a great group of guys. So right now, this is what it's looking like in the system. So you guys are, those of you that are with us today, if you're all from separate departments, you're in the company of over 7,000 departments that use emergency reporting, 36 million incident reports have been filed, and in the system, so of those 7,000 departments, we're looking at 754 personnel throughout the system. So pretty pretty crazy. Um, and it's only getting get more and more each day. So um, we, we thank you for um, being part of this family and uh, helping us become a better product too, because a lot of you I'm sure have put in feature requests and suggestions and uh, your feedback if you run into snags to our support team inevitably make our, our system better. And if you've encountered the, the changes to the occupancy module recently, your direct feedback help makes that make that even better. 16 modules, really there's 19 if you really count them all out by the rig checks and things like that, but 16 core modules and uh, over 600 reports in the system. All right, so getting into the meat of today's presentation, meat and potatoes. All right, so the maintenance module, I want you to remember um, these four words in the maintenance module where we're going to tackle a lot of um, the system is we want to organize, prioritize when it comes to managing the maintenance and inspection and NFPA annual checks of our equipment, optimize our performance, and, and the system helps you do that. Um, after you prioritize, then the crews, the PPE managers, um, your SCBA techs can optimize how things are getting done, and then you put all this data in, well, that's wonderful, but I gotta get data out so I know where we stand as an organization. And so reports, safety analytics, and uh, other components in the system can help you tell your story and see where you're doing a great job and where you have opportunities to improve. Then we've got our safety analytics, and I'll talk a little bit about this. Now, many of you may not have this, and let me tell you, you don't have to have this upgrade to your account to effectively manage your PPE. It is just another fantastic tool, and we'll talk about the PPE gauge and how that all works. I'll show you an example of a customer that has given me permission to share, and they do a fantastic job, and maybe it'll give you some ideas on improving your overall management of PPE. All right, so the standard we're talking about today is NFPA 1851, and it is it is the standard that governs our gear. I'm gonna show you some excerpts here, so a lot of text here, but I just wanna show you some of the things that if you, I'm hoping all of you have access to NFPA. Now, if even if you don't have a membership, which I would be amazed if your agency didn't have one, where you can actually download the documents or purchase hard copies, they do provide you the ability to view them for free. And so I highly recommend, and this can be especially today when we're doing a lot of isolation. So we're not out in the community as much, we're definitely not out in the community unless we're running calls, okay? And so you've got time on your hands in the station. I highly recommend for just an hour of training with your crews, go over this standard. Now, I like pictures, right? I'm a former firefighter. I like pictures. I like to you know, see a lot of visuals. Well, you know, as you know, if you've ever looked at a standard, there's no pictures here. That's okay. Take it section by section. Think of each standard as an elephant. You're gonna eat it one bite at a time, okay? and look through like this, routine inspection. When your crews, when your personnel perform a routine inspection, are they doing all of what's listed here? And I just grabbed in some examples from chapter or chapter 6.2, coat and trouser garments. If you look over on the left, coat and trouser garments, garment elements shall be inspected for the following. Now, some of it's really obvious and easy. Others, you gotta take time and look, okay? Thermal damage, rips and tears, reflective trim. I know my my older turnouts, 
the reflective trim was getting torn off. That that matters, right? Think safety. You know, roadway incidents, visualizing people on a nighttime fire ground, uh, things like that. Um, did you test the DRD? Is it is it is it performing as it's supposed to? So again, I like. I think there's opportunities here to say, hey guys, grab. Let's go out in the bay. Don't bring your gear into the into the stations. Those are the old days, right? You never bring gear into the stations anymore. Go out to the bay and let's say, hey, let's let's look through our gear when we're doing. Um, going through this standard and say, all right, let's look at our gear. Does it meet NFP 1851, what they're talking about here on that inspection? And it, have we documented it? Have we taken it out of service? And do we have replacement gear? Now, this is where you document all of what your findings are, what you're doing with the gear, all right? Cleaning it, maintaining it, repairing it, all right? Now, if you look at 4.3.3, we're gonna go into that a little bit later, but all of those Features there, not features, um, elements. All of these elements here can be documented within our system. And some agencies go to the bare minimum, some go all in. And I want to show you by putting good data in, and there's that labor of love on the front end, it takes time to do it and do it right. You can then extract some pretty powerful reports out of the system to tell you, okay, who's deficient? All right. Um, when is that piece of equipment going to expire? when in the case of cylinders are they due for their hydro tests. And so if you are following the standard, can you benchmark against those 11 items in your records management system and your, all of your ER customers? And, and the answer is absolutely yes. It's just a matter of whether it's being done. Do you have SOPs? All right, now in the, in the jargon of NFPA, an SOP is a standard operating policy. All right, and so policies have a little more enforcement capabilities um, than guidelines, okay? And so do you have in your organization written SOPs regarding the management and care of your gear? Now, I would recommend that um, you look at some best practices out there from different departments, talk to your neighboring departments, see if there is a document. And the reason I mentioned the documentation here, and again, I'm not one, to just document for document's sake, there's usually a reason. Because if, if you ever have an untoward event in your department where you have an injury, or God forbid, a line of duty death, they're going to look for a lot of things, OSHA, you know, any kind of uh, an investigation that may take place on the law enforcement side, documentation is going to be key. They're going to ask questions. Where's the records of this gear? Have you been cleaning it, maintaining it all, and so forth. And then they're probably going to ask is, is there an organization-wide understanding documented in the policy form on managing your gear, all right? And so this is protecting um, the public and personnel on contaminated PPE and the days of dirty helmets, whoops, the days of dirty helmets, dirty gear as a sign of, you know, a courage, a sign of honor, those days are gone, okay? Um, clean gear is a sign of a smart firefighter, bottom line. And I was just in that transitory. So I spent from 1991 to 2013 in the fire service. And so in the 90s, there was still that, okay, dirty helmets. Oh, I melted my shield. Oh, awesome. Yeah, there always is that kind of cool component of how you are exposed to heat and products of combustion. But today with cancer um, awareness, those days are gone. If you've got a dirt, if you've got dirty gear, you're not cool anymore. So hopefully that culture, that, that part of your, the, the change in the fire service that culture's taken hold in your organization. All right, let's jump into this. I do see that I have a question. Let me just check that real fast. And uh, Brandon, I will answer that for you here about um, if a PPE going out of date, will it show on my home screen? Okay, so great question. Um, I'll answer it right now. So right now, so Brandon's question is this, everybody. I'm gonna just go in and answer it and then we'll jump in. If I put in good information, which Brandon's most likely doing, is there a way if I have a piece of PPE going out of date, will it show on my home screen to let me know instead of constantly having to run a report? So the answer right now is no, there is no notification that say, okay, this piece of equipment's going out of service. You'll still have to run a report, but uh, we'll take a look at safety analytics. And so in lieu of running a report with a couple clicks, you can see any gear that is out of service. So maybe that be, could be an alternative for you to consider, Brandon, if you don't have our full safety analytics package um, to make it to, be a little more streamlined. 
All right, let's close this out. And we're gonna talk a little bit about COVID here at the end, but I wanna jump right into the system. Make sure everybody can see everything, good. All right, so what I wanna go over first is this. Get everything cleared out of the way here. And remember I said, we're gonna organize, prioritize, optimize, and analyze. First thing is organize. So in order to organize, I wanna show you an example of the demo account, and then we're gonna jump into a live account. So this is my demo account. It's messy and we wanna be on equipment. It's not the cleanest of accounts because other people get in here and play. But I wanna show you the organization of the maintenance module is, is basically a three tier organization. Tier number one is your category, okay? <clears throat> tier number two is your subcategory. Tier number three is the piece of equipment all right, and then a fourth tier is if there are any outstanding or pending maintenance items. Okay, and so organizing it, we have the ability to import data sets of equipment. Now, if you're if you're newer to us, you may have done that on your implementation. If you're not new to us and you want to import, that is something um, our team can help you with. Um, if you go to your administration module, and if I remember correctly, you will notice that on the customer facing side, you have the ability to actually import your own equipment. So again, talking organization here, this is what we can import. This looks very close, if not nearly identical to NFPA, that section of the data elements that they recommend in their standard to, docu to document. So as you look at a piece of equipment, and we'll go there in a minute, you can see the ID, the type, manufacturer date. When it comes to PPE, I'm an advocate of getting as much information here as possible. Here's a good one, and Brandon's using this, obviously, because he's running a report on it, is the retirement, uh, replacement and retirement date. And I'll show you the report in the system that you can extract that data. Again, the NFP 1851 wants you to document this. Um, serial lot number, size, model, this is another one. Now, estimated replacement cost, all right? So you can run, you can the report we have, I believe, actually pulls on from actual cost. That's something where you have to work on. But bottom line is you can get a, a rough estimate that if you say you need, you just issued a new academy, sets of turnouts, so it's gonna be good for up to 10 years, okay? You can put that replacement date in there. You can then also put the cost in there and estimate, again, if it's pulling from actual cost, then you can run it in Excel and, and you know update it for inflation and, and change a price over the 10 years. But nonetheless, you can provide Chief a rough budget for replacement of PPE if you're entering the data here. And so um, the template, this little blue link will give you the template. It looks like this. You can fill it out. And so one of these things is, well, we can help you with it, but you'll see if you're you're probably all pretty data savvy um, for joint, you know, you're joining this presentation. So you know how to work in emergency reporting with this template. This is all you need to do is bring it in. Now, here's another question I get. Well, what if we have the information? Well, it's kind of half, you know, halfway done. You know, we manually entered it. We didn't we didn't know we could do the equipment import. If I want to import this. Will it mess up what I currently have? And the answer is no, because it's all based on equipment ID. So anything that's legit, you can just basically enter again. And if you're updating information, you can do an import and it will overwrite or add data to that piece of equipment without changing its maintenance history or anything. So that's your way of, of updating that information instead of having to go piece by piece by piece. As long as, and remember, Anything you import on this equipment ID, anything you import will overwrite what's already there in the data set for that piece of equipment. So make sure if you don't want to change anything, that it's the verbiage, the spelling, the spacing is exactly the same, and you'll be good to go, and you can fill in any blanks that you might have on that piece of equipment. And like I said, this particular import, these three are customer-facing, and equipment's one of them. Any questions on that? 
Again, we're still on the organized component of our topic today. Great, okay. All right, so here, once you've got it organized, and it's there's not a right or wrong way how you, how you set this up, my recommendation is something close to this, um, especially if you're going to use um, safety analytics. And you might be wondering, what's the deal with this red shield here? That means that this customer, this demo account, has safety analytics, which means anything that is put into these categories, all right, subcategories can be created by you. Any piece of equipment in these categories will then feed what I call feed the, the pump panel uh, for safety analytics, and we'll get into that shortly. So here we've got Dave's structural helmet, and you can see I go to the edit icon. It's not going to have all the piece, all the data that I really want. Where's the ID? Okay. I don't have a size. Now, you'll notice that these are required fields. Chances are this was probably imported in the, in a, in the when you import, it will, you'll allow, you can import and it will accept it even if it's a required field. But here we're looking at size. Again, I forget, I know they, I know they don't come in small, medium, and large helmets, but, uh, and then we've got the replacement cost. Ownership, ownership can be edited. Now here's another thing, organization again. If for some reason, and volunteers may come and go, firefighters may move to other departments in the career world, that helmet's still good. They may or may not take it with them, depending on if they're retiring or not or how you do it in your department. But don't just add a new piece of equipment. If this now becomes somebody else's equipment, no problem. Dave is leaving the organization. He's retired. Um, now, if he's retired, we're going to archive this piece of equipment because chances are we're going to let him keep his helmet. But um, we're either going to make it to be uh, in the warehouse. So we're going to move it to the warehouse until we get a new firefighter. Or let's just say we have a new firefighter. We cleaned up the helmet. It's still in good shape. I'm going to assign it to Mike. I'm going to click Change. I'm going to click Save. And so now it belongs to Mike. I've updated the ID, and we're good to go. Now, one other thing here I want to show you, and this is this is this will come into play in the event that there's ever an injury or a line of duty death. This record right here you'll be able to see the history of its ownership. And then of course, one of the things here in the files, you can upload one, an image, two, a lot of people I've seen, I think there's some wisdom in this too, the user's guide that comes with all of our PPE can be uploaded here. It can also be uploaded to your library so that there's always a reference um, no matter what, there's always reference to that piece of equipment. Say, I just want to study, like firefighters will do this, but I want to just study, I want to learn all about my helmet and, and the standards behind it, the care and so forth and so on. Um, if they do that, you can have it readily accessible in your library as well. Sometimes people will put invoices here. Um, again, this is not a maintenance request. This is the actual data set for that piece of equipment. We'll save that. And we are good to go there. Now, prioritization. All right, so what I wanna jump into now when you're prioritizing, the prioritization goes, goes it's, it's a multi-prong, multi multi-faceted way of, of managing your PPE. So when, I, when prioritize, you're, you have hundreds and hundreds of pieces of equipment in your organization. That prioritization when it comes to PPE is one, once I've decided how I'm gonna organize it, how am I gonna get this data updated, all right? Do I wanna start with, what do I wanna start with? Um, my boots, my coats, my gloves, excuse me, my gloves, uh, my SCBAs, um, how do I want to do that? What's, what's key here? Where am I most efficient? That can help you prioritize the updating of the data. Now, when it comes to maintenance, all right, our system allows you to, um, when I say prioritize, it's not going to rank rank it by high, low, medium pr uh, priority of, of maintenance requests, but by adding the maintenance requests and using our filters up here, you can see and help you prioritize what needs to get done. So for example, we're gonna click here on the icon that says add maintenance request. And let's say I've got a, a moderate repair. All right, we're talking helmets here. So um, face shield, Broken. Okay. 
And now, depending on your organization, that may or may not be, because remember our face shields and our helmets, the drop down shields, they are secondary eye protection. So if you have primary eye protection, you, that, that particular piece of equipment may still be in service, all right? So this example, I'm going to take it out of service so I can show you what you can get uh, as far as extracting the data. So we're gonna take it out of service. I'm actually going to backdate it to yesterday that it was taken out of service, and I'll show you why in a minute. I can upload a picture of what's wrong with the piece of equipment, and I encourage this, then a description, and then we're gonna request and close. Now, many firefighters may just have the ability to request maintenance, that's good. Now, if they do, can assign and schedule it, that's fine too. Um, so let's go to that, and we wanna get it done as soon as possible and we can schedule it for our, S, our, S, our, our PPE manager or whoever's assigned in our organization to manage PPE or a vendor if it goes out, if you outsource it. Still out of service, assign schedule and close, and then you will see that I'm able to send emails to one or more recipients. I can add a description here besides on the message, which I again recommend, put in a little bit more so when they get the email, they know exactly what's wrong, the details, and then I can send the email. And now you can see that here I have in my PPE, in my helmets, this fire helmet assigned to Mike, it is out of service. That's indica indicative of the red triangle, the warning triangle. Okay. And it's scheduled to, for today. Now I can also print that work order and send it off with that helmet if I'm going to send it off. And so a lot of agencies do that. They'll print this, tape it to the piece of equipment, and then whoever's going to manage it can go in and reference that uh, in the system. Okay. And so again, talking about prioritization. So imagine if I've got all my moderate repairs, all right? I can filter by one or more by checking the box. And so I've got these three repairs, um, types rather, these repair types, and then I can look through. And if I want to, I can just knock it down to PPE. And again, I only have one, so I wanna show you more than one. But again, here, I can then look through this list based on my filters, help me prioritize things I also have the ability to schedule, uh, to look at the schedule date. That helps me in the prioritization. So take advantage of these tools to filter your pending maintenance grid, which is what this is. Anytime it's your maintenance grid, your equipment grid um, for organizing all of the equipment, but also based on the filters that you use, it will also um, re, uh, reconfigure, redisplay uh, what is uh, pending maintenance on, on what you have to choose or what you uh, what you choose here in the filters. And so that allows you to prioritize and quickly see what needs to get done within your organization. Now, again, it all comes down to uh, people in your organization understanding that this is your platform for managing your equipment. If people aren't documenting it here, how are you going to know as someone that has to manage PPE that something needs to get done? So some training is, order, is in order to teach them how to use this and to ensure that their permission settings in the administration module are correct so that they can take advantage of the features here. So when you go to request maintenance, you can set this to where that's all firefighters can do. Now, some rig checks and things they need to be able to complete. So they would have to have that permission to take it all the way down to complete. But again, these are granular permissions that you can set within the administration module. Any questions? Okay, so optimization. What I wanna show you next on optimizing is right here. This is an example of a customer that has taken advantage. So this is a live account. This is uh, Camp Humphreys in South Korea, our army base there. And this is by far the finest example I've seen. Now, I don't agree with, with naming them A, B, and C shift. I don't, they have a reason for that, but you don't need to do that, okay? Um, they have a reason for it. If you just had turnout boots, gloves, helmet, hood, and all that, that'd be perfect, all right? But you can see that this organization has 472 pieces of equipment broken down 
by A and B shift. Okay, I'm going to expand, and you can see there's no pending maintenance here. But the documentation is fantastic. Everything is filled out. So I'll let you look at that for a second. And then we're, we're going to show you on the optimization here and then how you can analyze with the reports. And the example here is it's fantastic. Okay. Oh, you know what I need to do, guys? So um, indulge me here for just a second. Um, before I forget, because I'm going to spend more time, more, rest of our time mostly here. But remember, this piece of equipment is out of service. Okay, so now let's say we're going to finish this. So forgive me for bouncing around. Um, but I want to show you what we're going to do here on this pending maintenance item. We're going to go ahead and edit the maintenance. And we are going to complete it. And again, um, when we complete this, all right, good documentation is in order. Back in service passed its test if there is one, any expenses involved. So I'm sure face shields are probably expensive, probably more than that. Any labor involved if there is any. An update of the invoice or always, if it's something like hose, hydro test, uplo upload a file that is the test results. I think that's, or the invoice. That's your gonna be, and or the invoice. That's gonna be a great way to keep it all electronically in one, one location so you don't have to go looking through filing cabinets. We're gonna complete and close. I can also send that email of the completion of this this uh, uh, work order. We'll skip it for now. And you'll notice here that there is no longer penny maintenance, so it doesn't appear. So let's clear all that. And we'll go into PPE. And we're going to go into The boots, it's due for an annual test. Oops. But what I wanted to show you, so hang hang tight with me, I want to show you this report. You want to see equipment. This is great for trucks, but we also have one for equipment. So I can run report 1702 for the month of April, which we're in, and I'm just gonna it'll only show that one piece of equipment, but you'll see that this structural helmet was out of service for 24 hours and six minutes. Remember, I backdated it. And so this gives you the ability to track very effectively pieces of equipment that are out of service and how frequently and how long they're out of service. So if, again, PPE is probably less of an issue, but again, I want you to be able to see that how often have we had equipment out of service and do we have a trend with certain, certain pieces of equipment that are always going out of service? Do we have a defective batch? What's going on here? Um, so this report is particularly good as long as you are properly time stamping the in and out of service. So you can see I put it out of service yesterday, put it back in service today, and that's where we're at. Okay, thank you for allowing me to go back to that. Um, I should have done that before jumping over here. But here we are back into the live account. Okay, so you're probably wondering if you're looking up at the top here, what the heck's this? Assigned PPE, my account doesn't have that. That's part of the safety analytics. And so again, what I just did, you can do all of it and effectively adhere to 1851 without safety analytics. However, with safety analytics, it adds some bells and whistles and it makes your job a little, a, quite a bit easier and it's just a fantastic tool. And like I said, I've been around to lots of customers and this, this particular agency is amazing. So setting it up. On their PPE set settings, you will add a PPE list. This is an ensemble. Within that ensemble, you will select and you can only pick <coughs> from, <coughs> excuse me, from, you can only pick from the PPE category on the main equipment page. That's a safety analytics um, PPE category. You can you get to create all the subcategories, and then when you're creating an ensemble, you check the boxes that those subcategories apply to this particular ensemble. So if I say structural gear here, and I've got in my PPE subcategories, turnout boots and so forth, then I have wildland gear, proximity gear, 
rescue PPE. I am just going to pick, in this case, structural gear. And that's what he's done, except he's named it um, A shift and B shift. Not necessary, um, but it's the way he wanted to organize it and it works for them. And again, you may have some unique needs like that too. Those are the ensembles, okay? Then you can add people to a selected list. And so this is not, this. Um, my Safari browser doesn't render this super great, but then I can add all my firefighters. I can filter by, by rank, by station and shift, add them to that ensemble. So we should look at this one. This will be the, all right, these are all my firefighters, okay. And then what this allows me to do is see at a glance the state of my personnel's ensemble. So Mr. On has these, piece, these pieces of equipment, part of the, those six items in the ensemble, the ID, it's all in service. He had his last regular inspection in March. The last NFPA was done in December. So it'll come up again in this December if they do it annually. And then the replacement date. So he's got about a year or two left on most of his equipment. But right now, there is nothing red here. So his name would be red if anything was out of service, if he was missing a piece of equipment altogether, okay, or it was past his replacement date. I can click once. I'm going to actually open in a new tab, and it takes me right to... that piece of equipment and it's supposed to take me to that piece of equipment so it is taking me to the grid I'll have to look into that okay now where does this come into play in safety analytics so right here if I go to analytics we've got the 11 gauges of the pump panel compound gauge 10 other gauges so here under PPE I can see at a glance that I have one person in the black. If I have somebody in the black, they probably ought not to be fighting fire. And so what's going on here? Their PP is either one, out of service, past his replacement date, or doesn't have a complete ensemble. Who is it? Mr. Pock, I click once, and I can see that, uh-oh, he's supposed to get new boots last year. Well, no, two years ago now. So they just need to update that. Chances are he's probably got new boots. They just need to update the documentation. But you can see I've got a red indicator that, hey, something's up here. So anytime something goes to past replacement date, it's a, it, he goes immediately to the black because that essentially that piece of equipment's essentially expired in the, the, the world of NFPA 1851 and per, per the manufacturer as well. Let's go back. What else do I have here? I have this. So the red means caution, even though red typically means stop or big concern, but black here is more indicative of I've got a major problem that I should not have that person fighting fire. The red here means they're probably okay, but they have not, they don't have a routine or advanced inspection based on the frequency that you've set in your account. They don't have a valid NFPA annual test. within the last year. So who's that? That's Mr. Ha. Okay, so he's got two jacket and pants. He's due for an NFP inspection. So either it's been done and not documented or hasn't been done altogether. And then lastly, because of the way they're documenting everything, 78, so 97%, of their guys are good to go. And that's what you saw initially. Now, this is a long list I'm zoomed in. Let me see if I can get it to display. Yeah, it's bumping up here in the browser, but those 78 people um, are good to go. So while there isn't a notification yet on the welcome page that was, uh, was asked earlier uh, by, uh, who asked that? By Brandon. And so, this is the next best thing because essentially when I log in, I have one click and then two clicks and I can see right away. So that's the next best thing right now, Brandon. Um, if if you if anyone would be interested in taking advantage of this this feature. And so 
I'm going to go back. Does anyone have any questions on this? And again, topics for other, other, other presentations, we can go into a lot of these other gauges and what they all do, but today's topic is focused on, on PPE. And this is probably the most complex gauge of the 10, but it, to me, it's one of the most powerful ones, if not the most powerful one. Okay, let's go back to And actually, no, let's stay here. I'm gonna run some reports in a live account because that's gonna be much more interesting for you guys. Okay, quick take here. You can access reports. I'm in the library, so, um, but let's go to reports. And we can go to the maintenance module. Now that's one way to do it. Here's my preference, and you probably have discovered this too. We're gonna go to maintenance go to reports, it's organized a little differently and may make your life easier. Now, the other thing I wanna to mention to you is when you've got a long list of um, items here and you wanna find something quickly, use Control F or Command F on a Mac, but Control F on a Windows machine, a search window will come up. And let's say I wanna see replacement dates. So anything with the, and I can type the whole word out, but I didn't really need to, but now I can see I've got three reports that I can see equipment replacement date for category, for subcategory, for date range. Now, when you see the word for in our titles, that means there's a filter. For equals filter equals friend. So, any and, and the higher the number, the newer the report. The newer the report, most likely, the more parameters there are, and they have multi-pickers. So, let's pick this one. Now this is going to give me everything for that time period. Okay, I click here and it's actually misnamed <clears throat> because when I see a four, there is no filter. So I would just been made a liar. There are some quirkiness uh, sometimes where the name doesn't match the report. You might have a report that doesn't have pretty bland, bland name. Of course, I guess they're all pretty bland names, but it doesn't seem as descriptive and you get there and there's a ton of pickers. So with that said, I'm going to go back to this one. This one has my pickers. And so I want to go and see, we'll do both reports, PPE. And I want to see my jackets, create report. And you can see everything that's due now. You can see they haven't put in, some of them don't have the dollar amounts, but nonetheless, you can see everything that's due and you can take this out into Excel and work with it as you see fit. Now, this one, okay, this one, and again, you can see it's a newer report without pickers. I want to see everything that's due in 2022. I'm planning my budget. All right, so here we are. This is a great one for gloves. We're still in gloves, still in gloves. Okay, and so this is breaking it all out by everything that's gonna be due in 2022. And based on what's entered, now not everything is of course, but if you're doing a good job and everything is entered, I now have a preliminary budget for my equipment that's due to be replaced in 2022. Now I'm going to be checking in thanks to all of you why I don't have pickers here because I'm supposed to have pickers so indulge me here I'm gonna grab a screenshot because I need to talk to the reports right uh, product owner that absolutely because really what it would help me here is having the ability to having the ability to filter so again just something we'll discover along our journey here um, in learning about the system but that would be I think very beneficial to all involved okay so that's one report. We talked about the out of service report. Also take advantage of that for your equipment. Now here's something that's kind of cool. Assigned equipment for personnel for category and for subcategory. So if you wish, I want to show I want to see, whoops, I want to pr provide each of my crew members a nice list that they can reference. Now I'm running for all personnel, but you would maybe just run it for your crew. And because this is a multi-picker, I can bundle it by shift, right? Pick all my people that are on my crew, call it Tom's crew. Um, and 
use that again um, when I run this report. And so here I can see the cost. Each person can have a nice summary of what's assigned to them. And so they understand what they're responsible for. Or you can just use it internally and manage, you know, manage your manage your gear accordingly. So this particular Mr. On, you can see, and it's sometimes surprising. Um, I like telling my people this. You guys are wearing, not counting your air pack, you're wearing six thousand dollars worth of equipment just for turnouts. Six thousand dollars. Okay, we're investing in you. We want to keep you safe. Um, take care of it. All right. Manage it. Clean it. Maintain it. Okay, so, and then you can explore some of these other reports and I'm sure many of you have. So that is all I have for today. Remember we talked about organizing our PPE. Again, organization is the key. Um, it prevents a lot of headaches and, and extra work on the back end. We talked about when organizing it, um, categories and subcategories within the maintenance module under equipment making good decisions on how you're going to whoops how you're going to organize it where we got a four tier three tier plus the fourth tier for pending maintenance category subcategory and then the actual piece of equipment remember in the administration module if you have admin, admin access you can import to update in a batch your equipment so that your data set is as good as this you can also change ownership so you don't have to re-enter that piece of equipment just change the ownership if it gets issued to someone else or gets put back in the warehouse or your 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 cache of equipment then when it comes to maintenance again the prioritization is also not only in prioritizing how you're going to get equipment into your system and, and organize it there um, but also in prioritizing any pending maintenance And so we can see, do they have anything? Let's see. Yeah, they've got a lot. Probably not much on PPE because the person managing PPE does an amazing job. But you can see this is all their equipment that's pending. And so this helps you prioritize, okay, what are we going to take care of? This is everything, but what's major right now? And so our system allows you to do this. And so question for you guys, and again, I won't be able to hear your answers, but where's major and moderate? It's not here because there is no major or moderate pending. It only shows you what would be on that grid if I were to select one or more of these. And then we're gonna optimize. Again, continually tune up, make sure everything is here. And having key personnel that are gonna go in and take care of this day to day. Don't let it languish, don't just set it up and leave it. It requires a conscientious, conscientious effort to um, stay on top of this. Um, and we didn't get into the fire service to become data managers, but I think it's safe to say that from a boot firefighter to all the way up to the chief, we are data managers at some level. Um, and so having a, some level of comfort here is important and being able to teach the firefighters how to request maintenance, which we also went over. And then last but not least, analyzing it through both reports of which we have some really great ones for the maintenance module and particularly for PPE as well. If, I mean, again, it's not PPE isolated because PPE is a category, but certainly to be able to adhere to 1851, if you look at that standard, these reports will help you with that very nicely. And then the ability to use a data visualization tool like safety analytics to quickly access and, and manage your PPE even more effectively um, by ensemble, by person, and then by a gauge that lets you see the state of your personnel's PPE. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. And uh, let's see, Brandon, oh, you're very welcome, Brandon. Very happy to, to address that today. Does anyone have any questions before we wrap it up? No questions, wow, that's a first. Other than Brandon's, usually we got lots. All right, everybody, well, um, I wanna close with a couple things here. In your handouts, okay, in your, hey, no, you're welcome, Kervin. Good to see you again today. Um, and your handouts, there's two of them. The brochure about emergency reporting. Um, feel free to download that and share it with um, other people in your region that may be interested in joining a great RMS. And then not directly tied to today's topic, but very timely, is a COVID document we put together. Please download that. 
okay? Uh, now, there is going to be an updated version because you'll notice that it does not include what we've added to the system. And what we've added to the system is this. Enfers is doing a study and is going to be collected at the national level. When you go into your incident report on basic two, you're going to see special studies. Now, what I'm super impressed with, I mean crazy impressed with actually, we're firefighters. If something's not required, guess what we usually do when it comes to documentation? Oh yeah, you're all saying it, we skip over it. So um, I don't have the latest statistics, but um, it was announced at uh, one of our stand-up meetings at the company. We're all working from home, so we had an electronic meeting with everybody. And 81% of you, without this being required, you're documenting it. So impressive. But we are working to make this um, something that an agency can make required, which means, like you guys know, you can't get through this report and complete it without answering everything that's required. It is not required now, but kudos, props to all of you um, for still documenting this. And it ties directly to the special study here. Um, I'm going to put this in the chat if you haven't seen it. Um, please click on it, share it organization wide. It's coming to the chat. And then the coding recommendations um, beyond that special study. All right. And next Tuesday, the 8th, I think, we are going to be doing, um, I gotta look at the dates. Uh, yeah, March 97th. I've heard, saw that meme on Facebook. My days are all mixed up here working from home. But um, we're going to do a special webinar on NFPA 1600, crisis and disaster management, and then really focusing on this COVID. So um, look for that. Um, I'll show you where you can register for that one. Um, and so the brochures, um, particularly the COVID one, these two links, spread the word in your organization and um, keep doing great, great work, but highly impressed with the fact that a non-required field is being well-documented. So most impressive there, please keep that up. Um, I did have one more question. Uh, John, does ER plan on adding equipment to ER rig checks in the future? We do. Um, the product owner, there's going to be some additional features. So um, if you guys don't mind sticking for a couple more minutes, again, we're off topic for the, today's presentation, but we need to cover your one, your questions, and two, you know, the timeliness of the COVID uh, outbreak. So with that, I want to point you to a couple things. One, and I'll put the links in the chat as well. On our marketing site, we've got some really great resources. First one. And if you're not, if you haven't subscribed to it, you'll get updates. But our blog is new rig checks, or not new rig checks, rig checks, new functionality coming soon. So here's that. Click on that, and you can see some of the things coming. Um, but main, adding equipment is something the pro, what we call our product owner, essentially the product manager, um, is looking hard at to be able to add equipment. Um, tied to the maintenance module, you know, the equipment that you have listed there. That's pro that's more of an epic story, but I know it's being considered, John. So great question. Um, Sean, COVID question. Seeing conflicting info about logging exposures for the virus. Some say every run as an unknown exposure. Some say log every run as an unknown exposure since any of the firefighters or citizens could be infectious with no symptoms. Have you seen anything along these lines for the NFN for study? I'll be honest with you, I haven't, and that's a tough call. I think it's going to be asked to be done at an organizational level on how you wish to document it until we get further direction um, from a higher source. Great question. I really don't want to tell you how to document it. Um, I have opinions on that, but that's all they are, are opinions. Um, like other body parts, we all have one, <laughs> so um, they may not be right. So. Um, I would I would say keep keep looking at the literature and maybe look at the International Association of Fire Chiefs website. They may be able to give you some guidance. I know they put out some good stuff, and then those links I gave you from Enforce checked in there periodically. Um, but a lot of it really comes down to the organization.